Cell phone use has become ubiquitous. Just about everywhere you go, no matter what it is, somebody has a cell phone. They, or they're walking around, they're carrying the cell phone. It's like you, you can't go any. It seems like you can't go anywhere on earth where somebody doesn't have a cell phone. I've seen uh, children, I've seen like eight-year-old kids walking around with cell phones, which amazes me, <laughs> amazes me. But anyway, the problem, uh, you know, there's several problems with cell phones. So uh, from a, from a uh, practical perspective, I get very annoyed when I'm walking down the street. Of course, I don't walk down the street looking at a cell phone. I think that's idiotic, but a lot of people walk down the street staring at their cell phone. Uh, you know, a lot of times they're not looking where they're going. I mean, God help them if there was an open sewer, they fall right in it. Or sometimes, you know, if you're not paying attention, they could slam right into you. Sometimes they don't look up until they're about two inches away from you. That's just plain rude. Uh, of course, my other pet, my other main pet peeve about cell phones is uh, is their use in the gym. And I've mentioned this many times in the past in past videos. You know, uh, but first of all, I, I'm not against technology. Let me let me put it this way. I love the new technology, computers, all this stuff is great. But sometimes it can be, it can, it's kind of like, it can turn into a monster. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde type of thing. And I think of all the electronic devices that includes computers, everything else, the one that has the most potential for abuse are cell phones, especially in the gym. Uh, you know, now I, I'm what you call old school, not just because of my age, it's just because of the way I train. In other words, when I go to the gym, I'm not trying to be Mr. Olympia. At my age, it's impossible. I'm trying to, my goals these days are to, to maintain as much muscle as possible, to, uh, to maintain my health. As recent studies have shown that maintaining muscle and strength has a direct relationship to mortality. In other words, as you lose muscle, it's a condition called sarcopenia. Your risk for mortality or death goes up greatly. A lot of it has to do with increased frailty, where you can't take care of yourself. You have to be put in a nursing home and all this stuff. But the point is, I when I'm in the gym, I take my training as seriously as I did when I was a bodybuilding competitor over a half a century ago. I want to work out. I want to focus and concentrate. Unfortunately, Gold's Gym, where I train in most other gyms, uh, as soon as I walk into the gym, and I go at night where there's fewer people, and that's the reason I go at night, because I, at this stage of the game, I cannot, I don't have the tolerance to train in a crowded gym, you know, where the people are taking, that's another thing about cell phone, these pity people keep taking selfies of, each, uh, of themselves, and I always wonder about that, because most of the people, nine out of ten of them who take the selfies constantly, I, I question why are they taking the selfies, and who, where are these pictures going, because they have nothing to show. They don't have much of a body, and I don't know. They're probably looking in the mirror and seeing something that no one else sees. But the point is, they get in the way. Uh, they're all over the place, especially in the daytime hours. I find it impossible to train. If I was forced to train only during the day, I would actually uh, take up something else. Or, you know, I would do some, some other form of exercise. I would not go to a gym during the day. It's ridiculous. I I just can't stand it. Plus, the people are in your face. They spread germs. Uh, I, I mean, when I used to train during the day, I'd see people spit in the, in the water fountain. The disgusting stuff, you know. So I go at night. There's fewer people. But here's my point. As soon as I walk into the gym, which is about 9.30, quarter to 10 at night, the first thing I see is everybody, the people that are in the gym, 99%, 99.9% of them, are sitting at a bench or standing, staring at a cell phone. They're not working out, they're staring at a cell phone. Now, what these people do is they they play with their cell phones. Sometimes they stay on their cell phones as long as 20 minutes, and then they do a set. Even worse, I've seen people actually looking at their cell phone while they're doing an, an exercise. That is a complete waste of time. They're not going to get anything out of it. So here's my point. Uh, you know, if you're bringing a cell phone into the gym, there's only a couple of legitimate reasons to do so. The first legitimate reason 
is if you have some sort of impending emergency. Let's say you're married, your wife's about to give birth, or you have an ill parent, something where, some, where people need to get a hold of you at any instant. That's a legitimate reason to carry around a cell phone. Another legitimate reason, and people have pointed this out to me, some people like to record their workouts on the phone. There's certain apps where you can list your sets and reps and the amount of weight so you can record your progress. In the past, this was done by using a notebook or something like that. Now they have apps on cell phones that will do that for you. I consider that a legitimate reason to walk around with a cell phone. As long as you're keeping up a workout pace, there's nothing wrong with that. The third reason is, uh, you know, they play music in, in the gym. Personally, I think, I think the music they pay, for example, at Gold's Gym is absolute garbage. It's grating. It's disgusting. I focus on my exercises, so I don't even listen to The music doesn't even penetrate my brain. But however, it can be very distracting. So some people overcome that by bringing a, uh, a cell phone into the gym. They have like a little thing they hook, hook up on their ears where they can listen to their own music while they're working out so they don't have to listen to the garbage being played over the gym speakers. That's a legitimate reason too. I understand why. What is not legitimate is bringing the cell phone in, going on, on social apps like uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and uh, all that crap, and doing that. And you could do that anywhere. There's no reason to do that in the gym. Now, why do I care? Everybody has a right to do that. What I get annoyed about is, let's say I want to use a machine, and you have some jerk who's standing in front of the machine playing with Facebook. He's not doing the exercise, but he's, 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 he's preventing others who want to exercise from using the machine. That's where it gets very annoying. You know, and uh, I, I, I made a joke the other day to a friend of mine at the gym. I said, could you imagine if they suddenly banned cell phones in the gym? There'd be nobody here but you and me because this guy was the only person who didn't have a cell phone beside myself. I said, we'd be only people left in the gym. They'd all be gone, you know. But anyway, so the bottom line, if you bring a cell phone into the gym for any other purpose other than that, the three reasons I mentioned, you're not serious, period. You're not serious. You're not going to make muscle gains or strength gains because there's something called the mind-muscle connection. The very famous trainer Vince Garanda talked about that. Arnold Schwarzenegger has talked about that. You have to focus on your exercises. You have to focus on the muscle you're working on. You can't do that if you're looking at Instagram or Facebook for 20 minutes in between each set. You can't do that. You're wasting your time if you bring a cell phone in the gym and you, and you engage in those activities. And then, there's the, and then there's the health aspect of cell phones. This is a completely different story. Uh, for example, a couple of years ago, uh, people who, with cell phones were alarmed when there were reports came out that using cell or mobile phones can cause brain cancer. Uh, now, what happened was uh, this scared a lot of people. It had to do with the, uh, with the what they call the radio frequency electromagnetic fields, which are transmitted by cell phones. TVs and baby monitors also emit those uh, what they call RF, EMF, as do other devices. And the idea was that uh, constant exposure to these electromagnetic fields by holding the cell phone up uh, will, act, will, will actually cause uh, damage to cellular DNA, which can cause brain tumors, uh, leukemia, and you know mainly t uh, different types of brain cancers. Uh, and this was a, a several reports were being spread around. However, uh, a couple of uh, World Health Organizations looked into it and found there was no association between this type of radio, uh, this type of. Ex uh, Radio electro, uh, late, I'm sorry, radio frequency electromagnetic fields. There was no connection between that and brain cancer. That turned out to be a false alarm. Uh, and, but even so, I remember at the time this report came out, a lot of people were buying earpieces like this, you know, sticking earpieces because, you know, the, the idea was holding the cell phone up to your ear like this. That's what caused the problem. If you kept the cell phone away from your head, you were fine. Uh, so, uh, so the truth is that there's no relationship between um, using cell phones and brain cancer, which is good news. Uh, the truth of the matter is that from what I could see, most people who use the cell phones don't even use it for telephone calls. They, they use it, they kind of keep it away from them, you know, like, like this, you know, they're playing with their games or, or looking at Instagram. They're not really holding it to their head, which makes the newest report 
about cell phone dangers, kind of silly in a way. They, it's an, uh, some reports have come out saying uh, that uh, cell phone risk, so using cell phones can increase the risk of heart disease. Uh, and, um, what the study found, it found an association between making cell phone calls, again, this is calls, not keeping it away from you, and increased cardiovascular risk, compared with those who made the fewest calls, those who used the phones the most, had a 21% increase of experiencing a cardiovascular event. However, there were some caveats to it. There was other risk factors involved in whether cell phones accent, uh, accelerated cardiovascular disease. The relationship between cell phones and cardiovascular disease was most pronounced in people who had pre-existing diabetes. Diabetes itself is a tremendous cardiovascular risk factor. In fact, most people who die from diabetes die from cardiovascular complications such as congestive heart failure. Those who smoke also had a greater risk of, ha of a contracting cardiovascular disease when using cell phones. Smoking itself is, again, a tremendous independent cardiac risk factor, which makes you wonder, is it the diabetes and the smoking rather than the cell, the cell phone that causes it? Now, uh, what is it? Why would cell phones... Uh, possibly cause um, uh, or stimulate or promote cardiovascular disease. This, this was a uh, study that was published in the Canadian Journal of Cardiology, uh, and they included data from almost a half, of a, mil a, half a million participants, and, and that's when they came up with this association between cell phone calls and cardiovascular risk. Now, the paper, what was the association between cell phones and cardiovascular? According to the researchers, the people that use cell phones, they, they showed sleep disturbances. Sleep disturbances are, again, known risk factor for cardiovascular disease. If you don't get at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night, you're greatly increasing your risk for cardiovascular disease. There's a, 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 a disorder called sleep apnea where people stop breathing during this, during this sleep. This increases the chances of getting a stroke about five times above normal. Uh, using a, a cell phone, according to these researchers, increased psychological distress, which uh, stress, which is also a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And the last factor relating cell phone use to cardiovascular disease was what they call neuroticism. Okay, so anyway, the uh, let's let's uh, uh, more specifically, uh, after controlling for various factors. The research has found that compared with non-regular cell phone users, regular users had a small increase in cardiovascular disease, 4% increase in cardiovascular disease. But the longer people spent on, fo on phone calls, the larger this difference became. Compared with people who made or received calls for five minutes or less each week, those who used their phone for five to 20 min 29 minutes had a 3% increased risk. 30 to 59 minutes had a 7% increased risk. One to three hours had a 13% increased risk. Four to six hours had a 15% increased risk. And six or more hours talking on the cell phone increased your risk of cardiovascular disease by 21%. According to the paper, three factors seem to play an important part in the relationship between cell phone use and cardiovascular disease. Psychological distress, distress explained 11.5% of the association. Sleep quality, 5.1%. Neuroticism, 2.3%. Uh, so the um, now what, what about uh, you know again this relates to people that actually are making phone calls I don't think this applies to somebody who's like holding the phone away and you know hitting the you know typing on it or looking at Facebook you'd have to like hold the phone closer to you but even st even so the fact that this uh, this is a observational study in other words uh, uh, Correlation does not prove causation. In other words, just because uh, some of these people showed cardiovascular disease from extensive use of uh, phone calls with a cell phone, it do there's no real definitive proof, especially considering that you know the the um, the association between cell phone use and cardiovascular disease involved major risk established risk factors: lack of sleep. Uh, uh, you know, lack of, lack of sleep and, and, uh, and, and stress, 
and, and, and neuroticism. Now, the last one, now that's an interesting uh, aspect of it, that, that last part, the neurotic effect, because that I could see. I mean, yeah, that doesn't necessarily involve making phone calls. Uh, if you go on, for example, if you, uh, a lot of these people, when they go on their cell phone, they're reading things. Uh, let's say it could be a social media thing like Instagram, Facebook. Let's say they see they use they uh, see posts that upset them to the point where they get angry. That can cause a rise in blood pressure. It can cause a uh, increased stress on the heart. Uh, it's related to psychological stress. I could see where people who look at their cell phones and get upset and what they see and read or hear can, can increase the risk for cardiovascular disease. That, to me, is the one aspect of this study that has some credence. The other things are, to me, a little bit nonsensical because, again, as I say, most people uh, who use their cell phones use it surprisingly little for phone calls, and most of their phone calls don't last very long. Uh, and uh, most of the people I see, for example, the people in the gym, they, I, I very, very rarely see them actually talking on the phone, although I have seen people actually walking around for their entire workout uh, talking into the phone. A lot of times they use earplugs, though, uh, and, of course, all they're doing is walking around talking on the phone, which makes me wonder, why are they even coming to the gym? But that's besides the point. The point is that um, uh, most of the time they're holding the phone in their hand, away from their head, and they're, again, looking at Facebook, Instagram, all that crap. Now, look, if you want to look at Facebook or Instagram, I, I look at Facebook. Now, I, I'm not on Instagram very much. But uh, first of all, I never do it in the gym. Never. I never use uh, I would never look at Facebook in the gym. There's plenty of time outside the gym to look at Facebook. As a matter of fact, I go on Facebook only when I have spare time. I don't make Facebook a priority. That's the way it should be treated. And I have to admit, there are things on Facebook that do annoy me. Uh, I, I don't want to get into political things uh, uh, or uh, or scientific or stuff or conspiracy theories, but some of this crap does annoy me, and I try to gloss over them. I you know I you know go to something else, but you know they, it can be annoying to see that it's a it's a low level form of stress. So, but again, the main problem to sum all this up, uh, using a cell phone will not cause brain cancer. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't admit enough radiation in your head to cause DNA damage. Uh, some phones admit more radiation than others. You could look it up on the uh, internet to find out the cells that admit the most radiation. But even those phones don't admit enough radiation to actually damage DNA and stimulate tumors. <clears throat> However, as far as the cardiovascular, uh, to me, this study was uh, kind of a little stupid, to be honest with you. Uh, because of the fact that, you know, they said that the, the reason why cell phones are, have a relationship to cardiovascular disease is because of three factors, which themselves are very strong risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So was it the risk factors themselves or was it the cell phone? I mean, again, cor uh, uh, correlation does not prove causation. The fact that people use cell phones and had these problems doesn't indicate that it doesn't prove that the cell phone itself bore a direct relationship to promoting cardiovascular disease. So, again, you know, uh, this is good news again for people that uh, that like to uh, are uh, addicted. Now, I'm not going to use the word addicted because I consider these people who constantly walk around with their cell phones and just can't get away from them. They are addicts. They are in a way they're addicted. Uh, but again, you have that problem of the cell phones in the gym. Uh, again, if you want to use your cell phone in the gym, uh, uh, just step away, sit on a bench, don't get in front of a machine, and don't inhibit or block people that really want to work out and are serious at working out. Get out of the fucking way, in other words, to put it bluntly. Same for driving. That's the last thing I'll say. Is uh, That really annoys the hell out of me. When I see people driving, and they're not looking at the road. They're staring at the cell phone. I don't know how many people have been killed because of people looking at their phones rather than paying attention. I've seen about five accidents myself. Luckily, I wasn't involved in them where people actually got in head-on collisions 
because they were looking at their stupid cell phone instead of looking at the road. And that, and that to me, is, is just as bad. I put it on the same level as driving while intoxicated. There's laws here in California. I think there's a 500, either 250 or $500 fine if you get caught driving uh, with uh, your uh, cell phone, uh, you know, holding up a cell phone. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that it's very rarely enforced. And the passage of that law had no influence whatsoever on people looking at their cell phones while driving. Every day when I drive, I every single day without fail, I'll see at least 10 people driving while staring at their cell phones. I think that's obscene and disgusting, and it hurts others. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, again, I'm not against cell phones. They, they're a useful uh, electric uh, technical device. Uh, there's a lot of good things about them. Uh, you know, another term for cell phones are smartphones, which I disagree with because I believe, from what I could see, my personal experience is that smart, so-called smartphones have made people dumber. So they're, in reality, they should actually be called dumb phones because instead of doing things that would nourish their brain, like studying, learning, and reading, they're staring at their cell phones and reading garbage and we're looking at crappy, ridiculous videos all day long, and that rots the brain. So smartphones, in reality, are more like dumb phones. So that's about it. Um, if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, effective fat loss techniques, supplement science, including which supplements work, which ones don't, uh, women's health and fitness, I cover all these topics and more. And I, I include many, many anecdotes about my many years over six decades in bodybuilding, my experiences of training at the original Gold's Gym with people like Arnold Schwarzenegger and the greats of the 70s and 80s. All of this is in my Applied Metabolics publication at AppliedMetabolics.com. Uh, it, it, it averages from 25 to, to 45 pages, no ads, just solid evidence-based information that you won't find anywhere else. I don't duplicate blogs. I don't duplicate the stuff you'll see in videos on YouTube. It's all off-the-road stuff that's a absolutely practical, stuff that you can use to improve your health and workouts from day one. I absolutely guarantee that. This, this publication can actually save your life and save you a lot of money from buying crappy uh, uh, supplements. I expose supplements that work, and I tell you the ones which do. It's all in the applied metabolics. There's nothing like it. There's nobody on the entire internet who has my years of experience and writing experience. I've been a writer for over 50 years. I've been involved in fitness and research for over 60 years. Uh, that, that's unmatched. And, and you know the old saying, knowledge is power, and it's true. So it's not expensive at all. It costs, the cost of applied metabolics is about the same cost of a as a cup of latte or whatever they call that stuff at Starbucks. Uh, by the way, I was, uh, I got to say, this, I was stunned. I went to a supermarket the other day and they had a rack with the current uh, Los Angeles Times newspaper. It's one of the few remaining newspapers. I think it's the only one left in L.A. as far as I know. The Los Angeles Times, the last time I purchased, the, I used to buy it every day. I used to enjoy reading the Los Angeles Times. I was a big big newspaper reader years ago when the last time i bought the uh, los angeles times it was 25 cents per issue now the sunday issue which was a lot bigger that was a dollar now when i looked at this issue of the uh, <laughs> the other day in the supermarket the current price of the daily issue of the los angeles times is three dollars and 66 cents which is to me is mind-boggling my, not only that, but it's thin. It's, it looks like it's like four pages. I mean, it's I, 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 the guy who owns the Times is a billionaire, so I guess he can afford it. I, I can't believe people are paying that kind of money to buy the Los Angeles Times, no matter how good the articles are. Uh, that's a little bit too much. Uh, in contrast, apply, my applied metabolics cost 33 cents a day, 33 cents a day. And if you can't afford 33 cents a day for something that will improve your training and improve your life and improve your health, I truly feel sorry for you. I really do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really do. There's, I, I, there's nothing I could say about that. So subscribe today. Again, AppliedMetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me a little email, and I'll, uh, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolic Facebook page where each day I post 
new, brand new information about health, nutrition, and exercise science and general medicine. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics, on my Applied Metabolics uh, webpage where current subscribers only could send me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything they're curious about that's related to nutrition health. And as an appreciation of their subscription, I will answer their question. This is only for current subscribers only. Uh, I also have on the Applied Metabolics website, uh, it's been published since 2014. Every article that was published is in the uh, online article Archie archive, which is, again, open to current subscribers only. I covered just about everything you could possibly think of related to bodybuilding health in the last 10 years, and you, you'll see that for yourself if you look at that archive. Again, it's free to current subscribers only. So subscribe today and take advantage of my years of experience and knowledge, and I guarantee, I promise you, you'll learn something with each issue. Uh, so the only other thing I could say is uh, if you like my uh, videos, these videos, I publish them every Tuesday. Jerry Brainham channel, subscribe. This is completely free. Uh, again, um, uh, there's no bells and whistles. Uh, there's only solid evidence-based information. There's no lies. There's no BS. Uh, I'm not involved with any commercial uh, entity. I'm not trying to push any supplements, any T-shirts. I'm not uh, any crap supplements. I'm just giving you the 100% with the 100% truth. And I think from what I could see on YouTube, I'm one of the last remaining people that is doing this. And most of the people are, are heavily commercialized. So subscribe today. Again, uh, both Applied Metabolics and this YouTube channel. YouTube channel, completely free. Uh, thank you for listening. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your shelter, uh, adopt a dog. I just uh, viewed the other day a group of uh, puppies that were just, I mean, they were painfully cute. Uh, but, you know, I still don't have a dog. My dog, Bruno, who many of you who are regular subscribers, you might remember Bruno from my past videos. He passed away over a year ago. I, I haven't been able to bring myself to get another dog since then. But I really do want to have a dog. I'm going to adopt a dog. Uh, I'm considering the puppies, but I'm a little worried about that. Maybe you guys could give me some advice about this because every dog I've ever had, I've had five dogs. All of them were, uh, you know, they were not all rescues. Uh, two of them were strays. They were middle-aged to older dogs. The youngest dog I got was Bruno. I got him when he was three, which is already considered middle-aged. For I've never had a puppy. I, I know there's a lot more work involved in a puppy. I'm a little concerned about that. But, uh, you know, I know that they live a lot longer, but... My first, uh, my first uh, idea is to try and save an older or middle-aged dog because they are less desired. Puppies always get adopted, but it seems like people don't want the older dogs, and I want to help them. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what works out. And when I get my dog, I'll, sh I'll show them to you in these videos. Take care. Thanks for listening.